Australian Armoured Corps is the modern form of cavalry. It has, in fact, taken over the roles and traditions of the famous Australian light horse units. At Pakapanyal, reinforcements arrived from one recruit training battalion, Kapuka, New South Wales, where they've completed three months basic training. They've been allocated to armour and posted to 1st Armoured Regiment for training as armoured fighting vehicle crewmen and Royal Australian Armoured Corps troopers. The recruits are interviewed by the adjutant to ascertain their technical ability and personal preferences before allocation is made to the trades and duties in the regiment. New crewmen are issued with their bedding and the famous Armoured Corps beret and regimental badge and flashes and core equipment which includes their personal weapon, the 38 pistol. Trooper Davidson will become a gunner signaller in a Sabre squadron. He will be trained initially as a gunner signaller, but in addition, he will be trained also to perform the tasks of every other member of the tank crew. He learns about the engines which power armoured fighting vehicles. And although he is to become a gunner signaller, he will also be taught to drive every type of armoured fighting vehicle used by the regiment. He receives practical driving instruction in the ferret, a scout car with five forward and five reverse gears, and a top speed of 60 miles per hour, forwards or backwards. The instructor sits in the commander's seat. On a selected cross-country driving circuit, instruction in handling the driving controls of the Centurion tank is given to all four crew members. Equipped with a 650 horsepower Rolls-Royce Meteor engine, the 50-ton Centurion Mark III can travel at speeds of up to 22 miles per hour. On the course, obstacles test the skill of the driver and train him to handle the tank on all types of terrain. Trooper Davidson now commences his gunnery course and learns about the turret down position used for observation purposes. Then, moving up to the hull down position to engage the enemy. He studies the types of ammunition carried by the Centurion for its 20-pounder gun. Classroom instructional models are used for training purposes. This 20-pounder gun model is less cramped than a gun turret and is used to instruct crews in the handling of gun controls, loading, gun laying and introduction to fire orders. To conserve ammunition and to give gunners the maximum amount of firing practice, a field miniature range is used. Solid rubber models are moved electrically by a system of wires and pulleys controlled from the tank. A 22 rifle is attached to the tank's 20-pounder gun barrel. The gunner reacts to fire orders and lays on targets in the normal way. Open range practices are the culmination of the student gunner's training in the classroom and on the miniature range. Firing of machine guns is normal stationary range practice to give experience in the firing of the tank's secondary armament. All tanks, armoured cars and scout cars have multi-barrel smoke discharges which can be fired electrically to provide almost instantaneous smoke cover if caught in difficulties under fire in the open. The gunner signaller, having been trained as a gunner, now learns to operate tank wireless equipment in his second trade training. Tank troop crew commanders are briefed by an officer prior to a troop training exercise. The officer identifies an objective which the tanks must reach and he'll watch their handling of each situation as it arises from his scout car.
The fundamentals of troop fire and movement are absorbed by practical experience during these troop training exercises. The crews learn to fight with their tanks to the grain of the ground, at the same time retaining dominating ground. They learn to gain the next dominating ground when moving from one fire position to another. This leads to a caterpillar method of movement by a series of bounds, all carried out at maximum speed. Obstacles encountered during these exercises reveal to the crews the need to study maps and ground closely. The crews learn to select their ground carefully as they plan each movement, paying attention at the same time to any exposure of their flanks. At the end of their day's training, the tank troops return to their harbour in the field where they carry out necessary maintenance and replenishment of vehicles and equipment. Vehicles are refueled with petrol, oil and water. Radiators are hosed out to remove grease and dust. Ammunition is replaced and guns are cleaned. If necessary, the crews and fitters will work all night to be ready for the job in hand next day. Each tank carries the equipment necessary to enable its four crewmen to bivouac in the field. The equipment includes a pressure petrol stove and an electrically heated pot which can be used if necessary to brew tea for the crew while the tank is on the move. At the Armoured School, Pakapanyal, courses are conducted for regular army, CMF and national service members. This school is equipped with a wide range of instructional models. This model is of a centurion tank from which the hull armour has been cut away to reveal the sectionized component parts of the vehicle and their location. This modern training aid is electrically driven and the action of all moving parts can be studied. Crewmen familiarise themselves with the electrical and wireless layouts of the Centurion. They'll become thoroughly familiar with every detail of the tank's design and construction by the time they've completed their course. This training extends to every type of armoured fighting vehicle being used by the Royal Australian Armoured Corps. In the cloth model room at the school, tank tactics and simple movements are demonstrated. Tanks always operate in mutual support of one another. Tanks exploit to the fullest extent the topographical features of the land over which they must move. Generally, only one tank in each troop of three will move forward, covered by the second and third tanks of the troop, which remain stationary until the moving tank has completed its run and become stationary in its new position. As the movements of a tank troop are demonstrated, machine gun fire from stationary tanks is indicated by the tapping of the instructor's pointer. Crew commanders and tank gunners must be able to recognise both allied and enemy armoured fighting vehicles during action in battle. Students are trained to familiarise themselves with the various design features of all types as an aid to recognition. Scale models of many types are mounted within a miniature landscape containing a wide variety of features. Students take refresher driving courses at the school. Army drivers use the public highways frequently during their training and when carrying out their duties. They study carefully the highway code and traffic laws. A model which includes roads, intersections, tram lines and traffic lights is used to illustrate traffic law and to test the driver's knowledge of the traffic code. The students study advanced wireless theory. This is an exercise in netting simulating the practice in the field of tuning all sets of a troop to the same frequency. Tank instructional bays provide the students with opportunity between classroom studies to gain practical experience with the Centurion. Here the students may be called upon to locate and correct faults deliberately introduced into tanks and equipment. In these bays, the students learn how to maintain the Centurion at its maximum peak of efficiency. 
Detailed instruction is given on the .30 Browning machine gun. This weapon is fitted as armament in the Centurion tank, the status of armoured personnel carrier and turret scout cars. Gunnery instruction at the school is carried out on a 20 pounder class instructional model fitted with a recoil simulator system which operates the gun in the same manner as when live ammunition is being fired. Regular soldiers carry out their field training in 1st Armoured Regiment. CMF and national servicemen in annual camps or courses conducted by the armoured school. At Pakapanyul, tanks move up to prepare for their battle runs during which they'll engage targets with live ammunition and with simulated enemy fire falling on their positions. The battle run is the culmination of a period of intensive training and is designed to reveal the strength and weaknesses of the student crews in handling their tanks under simulated battle conditions. Royal Military College cadets are present on this occasion as observers of this early morning exercise. The battle run is a closely controlled exercise in fire and movement. On these runs, the students are expected to bring out the fundamental lessons learned during the period of their training at the armoured school. During the run, the troop commander, in addition to controlling his own tank, must direct the movement of the other tanks of his troop and satisfactorily deploy the firepower of all tanks under his command. In this battle run, Bigger targets are used to represent enemy infantry and electrically fired charges simulate the enemy's anti-tank gun muzzle blasts. In addition, moving targets on electric rails appear on the range and are engaged by the tanks. The leading tank is caught in error. It releases its smoke ineffectually and will lose points allocated to it by the officer referee handling the exercise. After all wireless exercises are held during the course to practice voice procedure, set operation, tactical drills and map reading. These exercises cover a wide area of country and this control room at the school monitors them. Command of these highly mobile troops is exercised by wireless. In a camouflage Saddison command vehicle, the adjutant and intelligence officer plot reports received from forward tank troops during an exercise. From this information, the action of the battle will be planned. Deployment of tank troops and cooperation with infantry is practiced. Rifle section is shown advancing to the attack supported by tanks. The tank moves forward to a new position, covering the advancing infantry with its guns stabilized a facility which permits accurate shooting whilst on the move. Each tank crew of four men, crew commander, driver, gunner and signaller, each highly trained in his own particular field and competent also to handle the responsibilities of his crewmates has been welded by training into a close team. A team qualified to operate the tank as a highly effective weapon of war.